Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and whoever else may be watching. My name is Annie, and today I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in August. Sorry if there's noise coming out my window. Sorry that this is not the cutest little setup, but I've just moved back to the UK from the States, and I'm still getting settled in. And I refuse to close my window because it is very hot in this country at the minute, so that's this is what you guys are getting. I apologize. <sighs> yeah, let's get right into it because it's been a very chaotic time for me moving and obviously this video is a bit late, but we're just going with it today, okay? This is a chill video. It's a chill little, little chat and I am excited to talk about these books with you. <sighs> let's settle in to my very hot bed sit. I changed my mind. I have to close these windows. Cause listen to that. It's cute. It's cute, but not in this video. It's been a while since I filmed, so I'm just trying to get reacclimated to it. Again, very chill video, except for the fact that it is boiling in here, but it's fine. <laughs> Everything is fine and we're doing great. We're doing great. I'm just gonna get into the books I read in August. I read nine books in August and there were a few quite good ones, a few mid ones and a few, are there a few that I hated? No, there's none, there's no books that I hated but there were some that were just a little bit mid. Hold on, I'm gonna grab my fan. My brother got me this fan from Japan and I was gonna hang it on my wall, but today it is very useful. <laughs> ah, it's hot out, it's hot. One thing about me is that I hate the heat and it makes everything in life bad and it, it just ruins everything, but it's not gonna ruin, it's not gonna ruin this video. I swear to God, this, uh, it's taken me so long to even sit down for this video. It was literally the 8th of September I need to chill out, actually. Okay, first up, we have Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. Um, so this book is about a girl named June, and she is an author. And her friend, Athena, I mean, I say friend, they're more like acquaintances that went to school together and like run in the same circles, but Athena is doing really well, and she's a novelist. You know, June, she tried, she really put her whole self into writing this first book of hers and you know it didn't really work out it didn't really sell it was released to kind of like crickets there was nothing nothing going on but athena she is like a sensation the next big thing like great best selling got like a major deal with a publisher like she's doing well okay and june is pretty jealous of athena and athena is also um chinese american so that is important to note because it because it is something that plays into this story so in the first chapter athena and june are hanging out together and athena chokes on a pancake and dies um really suddenly, <laughs> as you could imagine. She has just shown June her recently finished manuscript for her novel, and she doesn't really show anyone these manuscripts. She doesn't really show June. She's just like, yeah, it's right over there. I just finished it. Um, but she's very superstitious and doesn't like to talk about her work before it's done, etc. And June has been struggling with a bit of writer's block. So she decides to steal the manuscript and she looks at it she reads it she's like wow fantastic but you know what i'm gonna make some changes so she switches things up a little bit and then she starts to think you know what why release it under athena's name when i've put so much work into it and she basically just steals it and publishes it under her own name doesn't give athena any credit and you just follow her as she kind of spirals deeper and deeper into this lie. Um, and she's like terrified that someone's gonna find out. The thing about this though, is it's a book about Chinese laborers. And 
you know, this raises lots of interesting questions of who can tell what story, like who's entitled to a story? Should certain stories be told by certain people? And what is morally wrong when you're looking at authorship? The selling point and everything that people have been saying about Yellowface is that it's this big critique of the publishing industry and it really goes there. And I didn't find that it completely did. I did enjoy it while reading it, but I read it more as like something a little bit fluffy that like it has interesting questions that it tries to tackle, but it doesn't really tackle them. Like it kind of alludes to them. And I think um, With Sydney made a really, really great video on this. So I'll link it down below. But she was talking about how when there's any sort of like narrative depth that we can try to see in this book, it just kind of falls flat. And like, there's some critique about Athena who a lot of people say is like a representation of R.F. Kuang and who I personally think is a representation of R.F. RF Kuang because, okay, in the book, all of the criticisms that Athena faces, R.F. Kuang has actually received in real life. So it's like she fictionalized herself and put herself into this book. Um, and instead of really addressing these criticisms, she just kind of skates over them. Like some of them are really valid and she doesn't address them. And that would make for a much more interesting, much more complex read. And with Sydney kind of talks about that in her video. And I completely agree. Um, when I was reading it, I sort of just found it, yeah, like I said, like a bit fluffy, a bit fun to read. And it was definitely like, it was a quick read. It was easy to read. The writing style was good, but it just, it didn't go there in the way I wanted it to. It was, it very much reminded me of Not Okay. If you've seen that film, it's quite good. It has Zoe Deutsch, I think that's how you say her last name, and Dylan O'Brien, my favorite person ever probably. And it's about this girl that works for this like journalism company or newspaper, hello. And she, to impress the guy she likes, Dylan O'Brien, pretends that she's going on this like writer's retreat in Paris and she doesn't actually go. Um, she photoshops all these pictures to make it look like she's gone and then like a terrorist attack happens while she's in Paris. I'm so sorry for all the noise out there. Apologies. My terrorist attack happens. And so she, instead of like saying, hey guys, I wasn't actually in Paris, tries to make herself seem like one of the main like victims in the attack. Like she was like, oh my God, I was right there when it was happening. And it's this lie that just like she spirals and people are like, is she telling the truth? It's, it's very much a similar, concept and they're similar in that you kind of find yourself rooting for june and the main character and not okay even though they're bad people like objectively bad like june is racist and she's you know not the best person but you do sort of find yourself rooting for her it was interesting to get an inside look on the publishing industry but it didn't really go there in terms of like really saying some stuff like i felt like i got a a little peek into it but only like only like one perspective on it um and i don't know if that's the perspective that rf kuang has because like rf kuang is a very successful author um i don't know it was it was interesting to get the look into the publishing industry that we did get and i did I liked it. I didn't love it. It does raise some really good questions for discussion. I'm just not sure that the book itself addressed those things in the way I'd want it to. I gave it four stars, but on second thought, I think it's more like a 3.5. Um, not bad, not great, just pretty good, you know? And it doesn't have to be groundbreaking, but when it promises to be, you want it to be a little bit more than it is. Next up, I read Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman, and this was so good, so cute and so lovely. It is about Nick and Charlie. They are two students at this school in the UK and they form a gay relationship and it's about them like coming out and everything to do with them and their little love story. Love. And it just is heartwarming and heart stopping apparently and really cute and I just love the character so much. I think with volume three, I had said that I was like a bit on the fence about it because of its like, the way it kind of simplifies topics like eating disorders, for instance. But I feel like actually 
in this volume especially like the discussions we have were really good ones and i want to take back what i said back then about volume three because i think it laid the groundwork for a really like powerful storyline in volume four which was which was really good um, I'm going to try to stop waving that fan around. <laughs> it was great to see Charlie and Nick's relationship mature and kind of get past the like, you know, we are all each other has vibe and see them kind of, you know, investing more time into other relationships. And oh, I just loved it. And season two of the show just came out and it was really good. So that was great. Next up, I read volume one and part of volume two of One Piece by Ishiro Oda. I hope I said that right. Um, and this was really good. I just wasn't in a manga mood, which is why I didn't carry on with it. But basically One Piece is about, I mean, it's a massive manga, so you might know what it's about. But if you don't, it's about um, this guy named Monkey D. Luffy, and he eats the fruit of this gum gum tree, which makes him all stretchy, like rubber. So he's like the rubber man. <laughs> and um, he basically can't die. Like, if someone tries to cut him with a knife, it just, like, bounces off him. And there's this great treasure that everyone's looking for, and it's, like, this great age of piracy. And Luffy decides that he wants to be the most famous pirate in the world and, like, the best pirate ever. And so he sets out to form a little pirating crew and take off to the first line where he can go find the treasure. And I found this really cute and really fun and really like goofy and funny and heartwarming. Um, so something I wanna continue with in the future and I would like to watch the new live action show about it. I tried to watch the anime, but wasn't like into it. I think because it didn't start exactly where the manga started, I was confused. Um, but yeah, I've heard the live action one is quite good. So I do want to watch that. And I do want to continue with One Piece at some point, but it just, I wasn't in the mood for it right now. After that, I read Us Against You by Friedrich Bachman. This is the second book in the Beartown series. And Beartown is about this town that plays hockey like religiously and everyone is obsessed with the hockey team. And so it centers on a cast of characters all throughout the town and their perspectives on hockey, on life, and what they're all getting up to. It's very good, very emotional and deep and dark and complex. And overall, just a really fun time. I mean, it, fun is relative, like I, a really emotional time. <laughs> um, and this one was very good. It was, I think I wasn't in the right time to be reading it because I was reading it in summer just like in sunny California. And this is like set in this town in Sweden or Switzerland. And I feel like that's more wintry vibes. So maybe I'll read the third one in winter because that would suit more, you know what I mean? I really care about the characters in this book. Frederick Bachman like really, oh, he played with my little heart and um, I get really stressed out when anything happens to any of the characters. But yeah, I think if I hadn't been, I was also in kind of a reading slump. So I think if I hadn't been in a reading slump, I would have given it maybe five stars, but I gave it four as it stands right now. Uh, oh my God. Next up, I read A Perilous Undertaking by Deanna Rayborn. This is book two in the Veronica's Speedwell series. And if you know me, you know, this is like one of, my favorite series ever. Basically this follows Veronica Speedwell. She is an orphan who was raised by her aunts in like the English countryside and she's a lepidopterist which means that she enjoys like hunting for butterflies and studying them and collecting them. So she does all that and when her aunts die she decides to go on a butterfly hunting expedition abroad and she's just about to leave to go to London when someone breaks into her house and then she meets this mysterious Baron who's like, hey dude, Veronica, <laughs> your life is in danger. You have to come with me to London. Like, please, it's a matter of life or death, come with me. And she's like, not really believing him. She's like, okay, whatever, sure. I'm not important, I'm like a nobody, but yeah, I'll come to London because I need to go anyway. So she goes, when she gets there, the Baron puts her in the care of this guy, Stoker, who is a taxidermist and a natural historian and a very charming man who's also very grumpy, actually, not charming. I wouldn't say charming. He's charming to me, but that's because I know it. 
what the fuck am I, <laughs> what am I saying? Um, I love Stoker and she meets Stoker and I love Veronica by the way. And so, so the Baron is like, stay with my friend Stoker for now. Like I'll come and get you and explain what this is all about. Maybe tomorrow, but like, I gotta go for now. And she's like, okay, ta-ta. And then the Baron dies and his death is blamed on Stoker. So basically they set out together to prove Stoker's innocence and to find out this whole mystery surrounding Veronica and why her life's in danger and all that stuff. And it is just such a good time. Oh, oh, I love it. The writing is brilliant and like really witty. Um, the characters feel really real and it's incredible. And the second book was no different, like amazing. I love this book. I ended up reading the last like 200 pages in a day. Um, which is kind of rare for me. All the mysteries and the relationship between Veronica and Stoker are super engaging. So if you need a book to get you out of this lump like that did, like this did that for me. So that's my advice. Next up, I read The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang, which uh, is my second Kuang book this month, but I'm actually not gonna talk about it because I have a vlog coming out hopefully soon um, that is a like reading fantasy I've been scared to read vlog. And I talk about that a lot in there. So just know that I read it and it is coming soon. <laughs> After that, I read Lock Every Door by Riley Sager on audio. And this was fine. It was a, a three star thriller. Sometimes I find with thrillers that I'm not very emotionally engaged and it prevents me from giving a higher rating than maybe a three or a four if I really like it. Um, and I think that's just my problem with thrillers. This was, engaging let me tell you what it's about so um this follows this woman i think her name is jen and she is very down on her look uh basically her she was fired her boyfriend dumped her and she is basically broke in new york city and she finds this amazing job where she can stay at this famous building that was written about in like her favorite book and she can stay there and like live there uh, while that while it's in between tenants and she's paid to do so just for like general upkeep and so she's like yeah this is great I don't I'm getting paid twelve thousand dollars for this for like staying here for three months that's crazy um, and it's like an amazing place obviously I'm gonna do it but she gets there and there's all these funny rules like she has to stay in the house all night every night she can't have anyone over she like, I don't know, really restrictive rules. And then some funny things start happening and disappearances and she's like trying to sleuth out what happens. Yeah, I thought it was a very average thriller. It wasn't my favorite, but I like the atmosphere and I wanted to know what happened. And I don't really have many other thoughts on it besides that. Like it was just, it filled the time and that was good. Then I read The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which I'll also be talking about in that fantasy vlog, so keep your eye out for that. And finally, I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Now, I'm not usually a romance reader, okay? But this really got me. In the beginning, I was like, this is great. I enjoyed it. I thought the characters were fun. Uh, basically, this is about these two people that work in a hospital, and they meet, and at first, it's like, there's a little rivalry because the female main character is up for this promotion and basically the head of the hospital tells her when this guy that's the other main character starts at the hospital like oh let's just let him like you know get a feel for things and then we'll see if he wants to run and like we'll see who votes for him and whatever and so she starts off hating him and he doesn't really know why because he's never like said he was up for this thing it's just like the boss kind of assumed he wanted it so it starts off as rivals but that goes away really quickly spoiler alert like just gone really soon and they start exchanging letters and eventually fake dating happens and um lots going on in the beginning of this i did really like it you get the man's main uh the male main character's perspective as well which is really interesting and i thought it was really cute the place where I had some issues was towards the end of the book. There were some things that happened that I don't particularly like in fantasy books. I mean, um, in romance books. So yeah, I just had a bit of 
an issue with the ending. I don't think certain things like had to happen for me to enjoy the book and it actually took away from my enjoyment a little bit. But honestly, it was a really good romance for me who doesn't like romance. So I'll take that one as a win. I gave it 3.5 stars, but I did really enjoy it. So that is all the books that I read in August. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit random with this background and the children outside laughing and playing and I, I don't know. Hopefully you enjoyed, <laughs> basically, because I enjoy baking it. Um, it's been a while since I sat down to film a video, so it feels good. And yeah, if you guys liked it, please give me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. I tr will try to post every week or two weeks. I'm trying to get it all figured out based on like school starting soon and stuff, but I sh should be uploading on here semi-regularly. If you watch this far into the video, leave a fan emoji do they have one because of my beautiful fan that my brother got me i'll see you guys in another video soon bye